Hello everyone, happy Wellness Wednesday. It is March 13th. I am your health and wellness coach, Carrie Donahue, um, coming at you and bringing you the best tips that I can for your health and wellness journey. Um, just a reminder, as always, I am not a nutritionist. I am not a um, physical therapist. I'm not a personal trainer. I'm not a doctor. Um, I'm not a psychologist. So these are just tips that I am bringing you, that I have read about, that I know that work, that I have tried out in my life. And, um, and if you need any further assistance beyond that, then by all means, you need to seek out um, resources for yourself, whether it be um, reading something, contacting a professional, or whatever the case may be. Um, so let's dive right in. I've actually been inspired for this uh, this Wellness Wednesday by two things. So the, the first one is I did a, a post um, on Monday, so two days ago, uh, that was Rachel Hollis's Five to Thrive. And I thought it was awesome um, and, and perfectly, perfectly awesome information, stuff that you guys in my group should probably already know and be implementing at this point. And then I was also, but I, obviously there are some new people and so it's still good to sort of reiterate that. But then I was also inspired this morning during my workout. Um, I'm currently doing ADD Obsession and um, uh, Autumn Calabrese. <laughs> Um, so this is week three. I was doing cardio core and all of Autumn Calabrese during the, the workout video um, said a very simple sentence that, <coughs> pardon me, that she has actually said, you know, quite a few times before. Um, it's, it's well known sort of, you know, for her and for everybody else in the fitness industry that they, you know, it said, if you want different results, you need to do something different. Um, so I'm going to combine those two, those two things to sort of, and, and, and as we go, I'll explain sort of what I, you know, what I'm talking about and why I'm combining both of those. So the five to thrive, if you didn't see my post on Monday, um, you know, feel free to go back obviously and check it out, um, at any time. And that'll give you sort of the, the refresher, the basic rundown. So her five are drink more water. Uh, wake up an hour early, cut out one food category for 30 days, move your body, and practice gratitude. Okay, so let's, you know, break that down real quick. For those of you who are new, who haven't maybe done all five of these things, um, or, or, you know, are trying to figure out where to start. Okay, so drink more water. You should be drinking half your body weight in ounces of water. So let's just say if you weigh 150 pounds, divide that in half, 75, you should be drinking 75 ounces of water a day. And as she says, you know, we are often, you know, we, we go throughout the day and we sort of deprive ourselves of, of fluid and our bodies are mostly made up of fluid. So we will get to a point in the day where we're like, oh my gosh, I'm so hungry. When really, you know, our body is just trying to tell us that we need something. And more often than not, that something is water. It just is, it's requiring water. And yet we're, our, some, the signals get screwed up in our brain and we think I need to feed it something, okay? So if you drink more water, at least if as soon as that hunger feeling comes on, if you drink a full glass of water, eight ounces of water, and you give it five minutes, you might find that that completely takes care of that hunger that you were feeling. But we often deprive ourselves of water, maybe only drink one, one glass of water a day or you know two glasses of water a day, and that's certainly not enough to hydrate your body. So please, 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 if you don't drink half of your body weight in ounces of water per day, that's what that's the very first thing that you need to start doing. Number two, wake up an hour early. Now, you know, as she says, I know I'm gonna get some flack for this, you know. <laughs> um, and she and she gives a caveat, you know. I mean, obviously, if you're the mom with 
a brand new baby under nine months old who's getting you up three and four times at night and you're only getting five hours of sleep, this is not for you. This is not get up an hour early when you literally got three hours of sleep. This is not get up an hour early if you are on a nurse, if you're a nurse on a nurse schedule and you're already getting up at four o'clock in the morning to be able to go work a 12 hour shift. This is not get up an hour early when it's unrealistic. This is for the people, and I was one of them, who wakes up when your toddler is standing at the end of your bed in the morning, staring you down, like, why are you not out of your bed yet, mother? Um, this is for the people who, who get up and, and are immediately on defense mode of, oh my gosh, now the kid's up, now I've got to do this, now I've got to take care of that, now I've got to, uh, you know, all of these things, moving, moving pieces that need to like immediately get into place so that I can just kind of, you know, salvage my morning before the kids are even out of the day, out of the door. Okay. This is for those people who, who had hit the snooze button five times. Okay. This is advice for you guys. Get up first. Be the one to get up first. Get up an hour early and do something that feeds you. Okay, whether that's read a Bible verse, well, not a verse, a, read a chapter, um, you know, put in earbuds and listen to an inspirational podcast, um, you know, stretch, workout, whatever it is in that hour that's going to literally make you feel like you have accomplished something before everybody else needs your attention, okay? So get up an hour early and do that. For those of you who can't get up an hour early, try to find an hour. And even if it's 30 minutes here and 30 minutes there, find an hour in your day where you can do those things even though you can't get up an hour earlier to do those things. Find time in your day where you are feeding yourself and not on the defense of everybody else's needs in their life, you know, of you in their life. Um, number three was cut out one food category for 30 days, okay? And she's a real proponent of, you know, especially when you're starting out on your journey, it's hard to, to, to dive right in. Now, if you can, if you've, if you've started to sort of like move in the right direction and you join me and obviously we've got the container system, I highly encourage you, jump right into the container system. Learn it, use it, do it, okay? But if you are junk food city when you start and you know nothing other than five days a week of eating out and two days a week of eating crap at home and, and, and you just like, that's overwhelming to do the container system and to, and to start eating clean. Okay. Then what I want you to do is do the best you can, but find one piece of junk food category, like soda, like potato chips, like, you know, cookies out of a box, whatever it is that, you feel like, gosh, if I can just get rid of this, that'll make a huge difference. Because every, every little piece will. Just cut out one. And as she says, this is that one thing where, you know, normally she's like, oh, you fall down, you get back up, you dust yourself off. She's like, no, this, this needs to be a non-negotiable. You need to cut out that one food category and not... I repeat, not let yourself down on this. This needs to be a promise to yourself that you keep. Because at the end of 30 days, not only will you have formed a new habit, but you will be empowered by the fact that I was able to keep a promise to myself. That I wasn't going to drink diet soda anymore. And by golly, I did it. And I don't even care for it anymore. And it's fine. 
You know, and, and, and as she says, even if you replace it with lemonade, you know, even if you have to replace it with something, that's something that doesn't have as big of a hold on you as the thing that you're getting rid of. Replace it with that for now. Just keep that promise to yourself that you are not going to have this that you know is bad for you. And you are, and, and you are determined and dedicated to help yourself along this journey. Okay. So that's number three. Number four, move your body. Okay. So here's where, I mean, you're in my group, so I can tell you, you know, I may have talked to you about a program when you first started this, uh, when you first joined me, um, Hey, do this. And, and by all means we have, we have proven time and time again that you can literally, literally start with any program, even if you have to modify the whole thing and you will get results and you will get stronger. And the next time you will be able to do more. And the next time after that, you'll be able to do more. So you can start anywhere. But if you, you, you joined and you're like, you know, you start the first week and you just feel defeated, even though you're, you know, doing modifications and you're doing well, if you feel like, hey, this program isn't, just isn't for me, I just need to do yoga for a few weeks, then do yoga for a few weeks. You know, if you need to do yoga three times a day and then walk three times, a, or, or do yoga three days a week, sorry, not three times a day, three days a week, and then walk the other three days and then take a rest day for the first couple of weeks until you start to get acclimated to the way your body's feeling with yoga, then do that. She, you know, as she says, it's just important that you move your body. We are so conditioned to just, you know, we get home from work and we sit down on the couch and we're just like, oh, you know, I'm going to relieve some stress by scrolling through Facebook on my butt and, ha and helping myself out in absolutely no way, shape or form. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, watch a marathon on Netflix on Saturday and help my body out in absolutely no way, shape, or form. You can spare 30 minutes to go for a long walk. You can spare 30 minutes to do some yoga. You guys can spare 30 minutes to do some UV too, some, some dancing to some cool 80s music back in the day and laugh at the instructor in the video the whole time because he's funny. You guys can spare 30 minutes. Move your body six days a week, okay? And then number five, practice gratitude, okay? So you're in the middle of your workout and you're just like, you're talking down to yourself and, and, and you're feeling crappy and, and what you focus on is what you will find. If you feel, if you, if you focus on this idea of I can't, you will find a ton of things to support I can't. If you focus on, gosh, you know, I didn't think I could do this, but I'm not doing half bad. I'm actually surprising myself with the fact that I'm still here, even though I've taken, you know, a bunch of 30 second breaks to catch my breath. I'm still here at the end of 30 minutes and I'm still doing it. If you focus on the positive, if you focus on what you're grateful for, you will find more things to be grateful for. And don't we all need more things, more blessings in our life to be grateful for? So don't focus on what's not there. Focus on what's there and be grateful for it and, and, and just watch your blessings multiply. Because the more you focus on what you're grateful for, the more you will see all of the things in your life that you have to be grateful for. Like the fact that I'm grateful for these four walls right now protecting me from that crazy wind. I'm grateful for that heater behind me that's keeping me warm because this window is letting in all the cold air. Okay? I'm grateful for the fact that I can breathe. I'm grateful that I woke up today. You know, whatever it is. But it needs to be something today. Something today that you, not something uh, that happened a week ago, something today that you can be grateful for, attend things so that you will start to notice throughout the day, you will start to look for those thing to, things to be grateful for and it will improve your mood so much. So here's where I get into the next part. I'm gonna just jump right into it. Okay, that's five to thrive. When you're first starting out, those are five things that you should be doing to 
to begin to thrive on your health and your wellness journey, okay? What if you've become a seasoned pro at all of the things that you've implemented, okay? You've, you got the five down, okay? Uh, you've cut out a ton of junk food one by one by one until, you know, now you're eating pretty darn clean and only having treat days every, every once in a while. Maybe now you've, you've gotten to the point where you're pretty good at, you know, starting a program and finishing it, even if it takes you a little while, okay? Now you need to look for those areas where you can improve, okay? It's sort of like, you know, find, find a junk food category that you can cut out for 30 days. Find an area where maybe you're like here and you're like, wow, I never thought I'd get here and this is so awesome, but I've been doing it this level for the last three months and I've obviously plateaued. Now you need to find a way to bump it up, okay? Gosh, I've gotten really good at these push-ups on my knees. Oh my gosh, I can I can bust out ten of them. No problem. Well, now you need to to when you start doing push-ups, try the first one on your toes. If you can do the first one, do the second one on your toes. Do as many as you can on your toes until you're like, oh my gosh, I gotta go back to my knees. And do that every time that you do push-ups. Try as many as you can on your toes until you have to go back to your knees. Okay, maybe you got to a point to where you're really good at getting in your workouts five days a week. And obviously, if you get sick, you know, if, if the baby kept you up, up half the night, um, whatever it is, if there's something legitimate that you um, cannot get your workout in that day, fine. But if you've sort of become this consistent, inconsistent person of, Every week you're able to get in three to four consistently, but you know, on the fifth or sixth workout, somewhere in the week, you're, you're constantly just not getting it done, or you're constantly just, you know, oh, uh, you know, not this morning, maybe I'll get it in, in the evening. And you do get it in the evening, but you know, it's not, it's not that ingrained in you, it will be done at this time of the day then maybe bump it up and maybe be like, I'm going to, I'm going to keep this promise to myself for the next two to three weeks of, I will absolutely always get it in at six o'clock in the morning. And there's no excuses unless I get sick or the baby keeps me up half the night. Um, because there's legitimate excuses. And then there's, you fall into a routine of always having an excuse of some sort of why this is sort of like your new routine. Okay. Maybe uh, you've been really good at eating really well for four days a week, but three days a week you have treats or you go out to eat with the family and you're, and you're sort of eh on it. Then it's time to bump it up and say six days a week I'm going to be on. and I'm not going to eat the food off of my kid's plate when they're done with it. I'm not going to do this, that, or the other thing. And only one day I'm going to treat myself. Okay. Whatever it is, now is the time. If you want different results, if you want to get out of your plateau, if you want to get beyond the level that you are at, then you need to do something different. And it's going to be, it's going to be customized to you. It's going to be wherever you're at, find that thing for you that's going to take it to the next level and do that something different. Okay. I hope this helps you guys. Um, for the, I hope it helps all of you for, for those that you, of you that are just starting out. And for those of you who've been with me for a while and, and maybe just sort of like feeling like in this normal, like, ah, da, 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 I'm doing this whole thing, but you know, I've sort of just gotten to this level where I'm not moving past it. I hope this helps all of you. Um, I super duper appreciate you dealing with all of the noises around me. If you can hear them, if you can hear the wind outside or the heater behind me, I super appreciate you being able to, to, to cope with those and listen through those and, 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 and stay with me. Um, and I hope you have a fantastic Wednesday. We're almost halfway through March. Um, I can't believe we're already this far into the year, but have a great hump day, have a great Wednesday, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.